Leslie's crying. Leslie always cries. <laughs> I love my backyard. I just love it so much. Morning folks. I've been MIA because I've been doing a lot of classwork and ancestry work on myself. I've Part of my transpersonal coaching class has been to produce a genogram. Uh, so I've been digging into my family history, my ancestry, and um, looking at the ancestral wounds and needs of my history of my ancestral roots it's really interesting work it's really deep work and it's very rewarding it also makes me feel much closer to my family and there's a lot of forgiveness involved because context brings understanding about um why certain things happen in our family. It's like according to family bone systems, no one is an individual. Like, we're, we're the results of who we are isn't um, as an individual player, so to speak, on the stage. We are the result of a whole family system and, you know, innumerable ancestors handing down their wounds and traumas and joys and skills and talents and um, sacrifices and uh, losses, it all gets handed down to us. And most of us lose contact with the memory of where these wounds come from. So it's been really rewarding um, and there are definite themes in my family that I didn't realize I was kind of aware of, but I didn't really get it. I feel honored and overwhelmed a little bit at the fact that I am the first woman in my entire family line who has chosen not to sacrifice anything for a family. I have chosen not to have children. I am not married. I have always wanted to retain my juice for myself, my energy for myself. I'm the first woman who's ever chosen that in my entire family history that I'm aware of. Who knows, maybe it happened back, 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 but there is so much for women in particular, sacrifice of personal joys, personal talents, hopes, dreams for family. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of ancestry work. I actually am also taking another course. It's called Ancestral Healing and Forgiveness. Um, the idea is that uh, we have the current global situation that we do because none of us have been processing ever any of this family trauma that's been handed down over and over and over again, generation after generation. Most of us, frankly, our ancestors, were just concerned about surviving. Survival was literally the only um, concern that mattered, and which is fair, you know, fair. We have the opportunity to heal a lot of this garbage that um, has been handed down to us and handed down to us unprocessed or at least very very literally processed and it's all just still here like our bodies are literally the earth like we literally carry the earth with us and everything that happens to us energetically is also in the earth so all of these billions of people on the earth with this unhealed um, trauma and abuses and losses and it's just creating a nightmare like we live in a field of fear we really do it's just a field of fear uh, and we're healing that and it's rocky and it's beautiful I've also learned that um, it's important in the healing process 
part of my, my healing process is sharing. I'm sharing with you whatever I'm learning. Sharing works on a couple different levels. When I share with you, I can't share with you anything that I don't already own. So when I share with you, it comes back to me because by sharing with you, I create a space for that truth to land in myself. And it gets really clear when you want to share a realization or an epiphany or a truth or a belief. When you share it, you get very clear on it because it opens up space for that to come back and land in you. So you can't give away anything that you don't own. So sharing my, my learnings and my epiphanies about this whole ancestral healing process, this whole process of healing in the world is um, a great gift that you give me by listening. So I thank you for being here. And I have a request or an invitation. We all think, like we all have our beliefs. We, we all know what we value and what we hold is true and important in our lives. Go and share that with someone you love and trust. Purposely and specifically go to them and ask them to listen to you share and explain what's most important to you, what you value most, what you believe is most important. Because it's surprising how you think you're very clear on it until you have to share it. And then it takes a moment to be able to actually express and communicate that. And that is a second part of the process. You can have it all inside, but until you share it with someone else out in the world, it's like it's not real because it hasn't had a place to land inside yourself. You have to share for it to come back and be yours for real. And attached to this idea, it's the same process because, I mean, this entire universe is made up of breathing in and breathing out. Everything comes in and goes out, comes back in, goes back out. It's a constant exchange. This life is a constant exchange and a dynamic of giving and taking of all things on all levels. And um, part of this is when you give, you have to allow yourself to receive. I think in spiritual circles, um, the focus is always on giving. Like in religion too, the focus is always on on giving, giving, giving. And absolutely we give without the expectation of receiving, but we have to be open to receive from creation. We have to be open to receive from the world, from whatever way it comes back to us. Love, care, attention, money, food, abundance of all types. It was a huge eye-opener to me to realize that yes, I have, I realized that my purpose is to share my love for the world with the world and let it love me back. And that was a piece that had been missing for a long time and I'm realizing how important that piece is, especially in how it relates to the natural world. The world loves us. It loves us. If you love the world and you have that heartfelt feeling for the trees and the birds and the waters and the fish, and all the animals and the plants. It's not uniquely yours. That's returned. And when I opened my heart to allow it to love me back, it changed everything. <laughs> it really did. It changed everything. Because up until that moment, I hadn't considered that the world loved us back.
I'd always considered human beings being a problem. And we're not. We can be. But that's not how we were created. We are part of nature. And the world loves us. Let the world love you. Thanks for listening. Leslie's crying. Leslie always cries. <laughs> love you. It was like, love you. I do, I love you. <laughs>